Hello, welcome to Doc Ben's Micronutrients. In today's episode, let's talk about glutathione. Glutathione is a very fascinating molecule. It is present in all tissue and fluids throughout the body. So although the glutathione content of bodily fluids is significantly lower, up to thousandfold lower than those found in tissue, all cells release glutathione, suggesting that it is essential for cellular function as well as for defense. Glutathione is found in surprisingly high levels, about 5 millimolar in concentration in most cells. This cellular glutathione is similar in concentration in cells as fasting glucose or potassium. The total amount of glutathione in the body is therefore about 15 grams, of which 5 grams is cysteine. I'll talk about cysteine in a few minutes. The liver has the highest glutathione content, about 4 grams. Although liver glutathione concentrations fluctuate somewhat according to the time of the day, the composition of the diet and bodily demands of glutathione. So, what is glutathione? Glutathione is a tripeptide, three amino acids attached to each other. These three amino acids are glycine, glutamic acid and cysteine. So, the biological activity of glutathione is derived from this amino acid cysteine. Because cysteine is relatively unstable, and rapidly oxidizes to uh, an oxidized form called as cysteine double S, which is disulfide cysteine, glutathione serves as the primary cysteine reservoir. So this cysteine has a thiol side chain, which often participates in enzymatic reactions as a nucleophile. And a nucleophile is a chemical species that forms bonds with electrophiles in donating an electron pair. And this is very important in the oxidation reduction that happens in our body. As I mentioned earlier, considering the high levels of metabolic activity required to produce glutathione, such a high level underlines that it is seriously very important. Glutathione exists in our cells in two states, a reduced state and an oxidized state. And it's very important to have these two states because they are interchangeable and they participate in very important reactions called as redox or reduction oxidation um, uh, reactions. Now, it is important to reduce oxidized molecules in the body and oxidation is uh, one of the major side effects of using oxygen in, in reactions. And this is what uh, we decided to have a couple of years back to use oxygen as an important molecule for survival. And oxidation happens because of the participation of oxygen. Now, what I meant by a couple of years back is actually a couple of millions of years ago. The ratio of reduced glutathione to oxidized glutathione determines a cell redox status. Now healthy cells have a reduced to oxidized ratio of more than 100 and this drops when the cells are exposed to oxidant stress. The, the important message here is that if cells do not get back to their healthy state with this uh, better ratio, it becomes a problem. So a reduction or depletion of cellular glutathione can lead to many problems and some of them are listed over here, such as the amplification of oxidative and nitrosative cell damage, increased level of inflammation, which is very central to many aging problems, disturbances in intracellular signaling pathways for molecules like P53 and nuclear, kappa, uh, nuclear factor kappa B, decreased DNA synthesis and cell proliferation, 
and inactivation of complex one of the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain is important for energy production in the mitochondria of cells. Now considering how important glutathione is to health, Many researchers have looked into or looked for ways to increase intracellular and intramitochondrial levels of glutathione. Here are some strategies to increase intracellular glutathione. I have listed four of such strategies. I'm sure we can add more to this list as we get more information both on glutathione as well as uh, cellular pathways. One, one is to decrease the need for glutathione itself, which means decrease toxic load. And of course, the most obvious thing is to limit alcohol consumption and probably cigarette smoking. Now, the less obvious is decreasing exposure to persistent organic pollutants, the primary source of which are conventionally grown foods. This is actually huge. Here is another strategy. This is to provide other antioxidants to decrease oxidative stress. So that gives glutathione some breathing space and gives cells enough time to probably replenish glutathione. A good example of uh, such uh, uh, an antioxidant is alpha lipoic acid. What we know is that if you supplement uh, a person with uh, ALA or alpha lipoic acid, it increases mitochondrial glutathione levels. Which, which, is, which is fantastic because even though it do doesn't directly increase uh, glutathione levels, it helps glutathione levels to, to increase by reducing the stress on the cells or oxidative stress on the cells. The third strategy and the most obvious strategy, of course, is to directly administer glutathione. And this can be done by giving glutathione orally, topically, intravenously, intranasally or in a nebulized form. We've always had a challenge with the oral and topical uh, you know, variations of glutathione, but now we have newer formulations of these oral and transdermal topical, that is liposomal glutathione, which show a lot of promise. Now an interesting way of increasing glutathione levels in the body is to provide specific nutrients that promote glutathione production in the body. Now cysteine, we spoke about some time back. Uh, the availability of cysteine is one of the rate limiting steps in the, in the internal body production of glutathione. So we can give cysteine. Oral cysteine is always a challenge because it, it gets destroyed, it is not absorbed well in the digestive tract. So the supplemental cysteine comes in the form of something called as NAC, N-acetylcysteine. And that is pretty effective in raising the levels of glutathione. Even a thousand milligrams of NAC will substantially increase glutathione in virtually all patients. One can also improve glutathione levels by some natural food, like sulfur-rich fruit and vegetables, which have glutathione or NAC or even cysteine that is probably a bit digestible and uh, absorbable. And these are asparagus, avocado, banana, broccoli, carrots, cauliflower, and so on. So here is the list. It's important to preserve the integrity of sulfur compounds, especially in the cookable vegetables that we, that we consume. Now, it's, it's good to eat raw, if possible, some of the vegetables like broccoli, very finely sliced broccoli. It's also good to refrain from freezing cruci cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and probably even cabbage. Add powdered mustard seeds during the heating process to increase sulforaphane content. Sulforaphane is an extremely powerful anti-cancer molecule as well. And of course, there are many chronic diseases which are associated with the reduction in glutathione levels. To get to the disease side, we should know what the metabolic functions or the functions of glutathione are. Here is a list. DNA synthesis and repair. Glutathione is important in protein synthesis. Do, uh, prostaglandin synthesis. Prostaglandins are important in the inflammatory processes. The, uh, glutathione helps in amino acid transportation. 
Glutathione helps in metabolism of toxins and carcinogens. It helps in enhancement of immune system function. The prevention of oxidative cell damage, as, as we have talked about, uh, those are redox uh, chemical reactions. And also very important in enzymatic activation in cells. So here are some of the clinical conditions and diseases associated with reduction or inavailability of glutathione. Aging and related disorders, big, huge, Alzheimer's disease, cancer, chronic liver diseases, cognitive impairment, cystic fibrosis, diabetes, especially uncontrolled diabetes, increased blood pressure, infertility both in men and women, mental health disorders, multiple sclerosis, neurodegenerative diseases or disorders, and Parkinson's disease. This is actually a very short list of challenges that can occur with low or inavailability of glutathione. To drive the point further home, here is a list of uh, central nervous system disorders like Alzheimer's, which have been listed earlier. Alzheimer's, autism, bipolar disorder, multiple sclerosis. The, I the idea is to show you all that with these diseases, we know that there is a reduction in the blood levels of glutathione as well as cellular levels of glutathione. Please find here a list of food and nutrients that increase glutathione levels in, in blood and cells and the recommended dosage. For example, alpha lipoic acid 300 mg 3 times a day, curcumin which increases uh, antioxidant, well, is a brilliant antioxidant, um, glutathione itself, glutathione oral or different forms of glutathione, glycine, green tea, N-acetylcysteine, uh, we spoke about it earlier, omega-3 fatty acids, salmon, selenium, uh, which is a very, which I think I've spoken about some time back in one of my presentations, vitamin C, vitamin E, and whey protein. So it's important to maintain that glutathione pool, which is required for various redox uh, chemical pathways. And that pool can be maintained by having a glutathione itself or ingredients that help making glutathione like NAC. And also help, uh, you know, taking that glutathione from the pool and using it up by reducing challenges like alcoholism and smoking. A special mention of glutathione and skin lightening, very popular in many parts of the world. We know by experiments that glutathione is related to melanogenesis or the formation of melanin pigments, the brown pigment on our skin. We know that glutathione has anti-melanogenic properties, which is a result of from a variety of mechanisms, including stimulation of pheomelanin synthesis rather than the darker U melanin. And melanin uh, sorry, and glutathione also has antioxidant properties. So glutathione may help in skin lightening. So let me end this presentation by saying that glutathione is seriously interesting.